Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Cancer Answers. I'm your host, Heather Rifat, and today Dr. John Shepard will join me for a conversation about the importance of physical health and cancer. Dr. Shepard serves as a full member in the Population Sciences in the Pacific program, Cancer Epidemiology, at the UH Cancer Center. He has a 30-year background in quantitative imaging. Most of his academic research involves developing a variety of imaging modalities, including scans for bone density and body composition, mammography for breast density, and tissue textural measures as risk factors for breast cancer, and 3D optical whole body scanning as a risk factor for metabolic diseases, including cancer. Wow, that's a mouthful. (laughs) So, Dr. Shepard, thank you for being here. Can you please elaborate more on your area of expertise at the UH Cancer Center? Sure. Um, My expertise really ranges in several topics. One uh, is as an expert in measuring body composition. And I use that in the Cancer Center to quantify body fat uh, and obesity because obesity is a risk factor for essentially cancer in general. Uh, it accounts for about 20% of all cancers. And what I mean by that is that if you have, if uh, uh, the higher the, um, uh, your uh, body fat, the more at risk you are developing cancer in general. Uh, and so I'm, I'm an expert in the methodologies of measuring body composition. And that ranges from uh, uh, infants as, as small as a kilogram, like a neonate, upwards to 85-year-olds. Uh, you could weigh one pound like that little baby, or you could weigh 300 pounds. Uh, my expertise is uh, the accuracy and the ability to, to measure body fat. The second uh, is involved in uh, with regards to breast cancer. And I originally got into breast cancer through body composition because um, I, I can measure body composition of any part of the body and uh, breast density, which is the amount of the lean fibroglandular tissue you have relative to the total breast volume, uh, is one of the strongest risk factors for who will develop breast cancer. Other than age, breast density is the strongest risk factor of, of the common risk factors. So I was recruited in about 20 years ago from a colleague that knew about my work in measuring bone density and asked me, can you develop a method to measure breast density? And ever since then, I've been in breast cancer research. And I have, I have uh, uh, several NIH studies uh, involved in both those topics. That's really interesting what you mentioned regarding um, breast density and body composition having a correlation and how breast density actually contributes to, is a risk factor for um, breast cancer. Um, So Dr. Shepard, I wanted to ask you, since we are talking about physical health, how is it correlated with higher risk for cancer? Well, uh, physical health, uh, I I would think of it as how does poor health relate to higher risk of cancer? And by poor health, it could be um, uh, that you have low uh, physical activity levels so that you are in in a weakened state physically, or it could be that you're overweight. So um, being overweight puts you at higher risk for cancer in general. Uh, and that's the strongest thing I can think of that people have somewhat some control over is how active they are, uh, their diet and, um, uh, you know, their, their exercise. Those are things that they can monitor to reduce their risk. Right. Good points. Um, and now I would like to draw a parallel between what you, what you answered right now with your ongoing research at the cancer center. Um, that can actually help individuals lead a better, healthier lifestyle? Um, Well, one is we have a study called Shape Up. And Shape Up is trying to um, relate your body shape to your overall health. And so we we measure your body shape using 3D optical cameras. uh, And it gives us an avatar of your body. And using statistical methods, we can relate that overall body shape you have to, for example, blood markers that are risk factors for cancer or for, um, you know, diabetes or cardiovascular disease. 
Um, and uh, we can also use your body shape to measure body composition, which is difficult to measure you know, at home uh, using uh, accurate methods. And, and also what measuring body shape does for you is it gives you goals to look at. So we can predict if you lose 10 pounds of fat, for example, I can, I can take an optical scan of you and then show you what you'll look like, give you a 3D body, um, your, your 3D body, as if you had lost 10 pounds of fat. And that can be very uh, motivational for people to stay with um, interventions of diet and exercise. That is very interesting. So how is this research going to benefit individuals in the long run? Well, the, the two things that my research hopefully will do is um, reduce the burden of, of cancer if you uh, develop cancer. Um, for, for example, we would like to be able to monitor the weight loss that someone experiences uh, when they when they get cancer and uh, the, the, these optical scanning methods I was describing uh, can give us these very accurate measures without people having to do you know really anything strenuous. Um, you you want to know for for example um, some cancers uh, are associated with a lot of loss of muscle and it's just because you're not eating well afterwards and you're not exercising so you lose a lot of muscle and that puts you in a more frail state. And actually it can be uh, lead to higher mortality by losing a lot of muscle. So our method should be able to uh, uh, be a sensitive way for healthcare providers to be able to know if somebody has lost muscle. Uh, they might not be able to tell you that, right? So uh, we scan their body. Uh, you know, Mrs. Jones has lost three pounds of muscle uh, over the past three months. That, that might be worrisome to the physician and he might have an intervention specifically to try to uh, push uh, uh, the maintenance of, of muscle for that, that patient. The second is that we want to try to reduce uh, advanced stage breast uh, uh, cancer. And if we can find uh, those at risk of developing breast cancer earlier, then hopefully we can monitor them more often and find the cancer earlier when it's more treatable. For, for example, if I, uh, if, if, if I find out that a woman is high risk of cancer, I would treat her differently as a patient than someone that is at low risk of cancer. You would want to monitor her more often. Uh, you'd want to potentially use methods that are sensitive to uh, um, see the cancer earlier. Uh, and so that will, that will reduce mortality and hopefully, you know, give people longer, healthier lives. I think it's fascinating that you mentioned um, how the 3D optical whole body scanning and physical health have a correlation because that is really, that really gives you insight into whether you need to lose more weight or you need to gain more weight, depending on your body type. Um, towards the end, what measures do you think individuals should take to reduce their risk of cancer? The, the first thing is that, um, you know, adults are, uh, should be screened for cancers when their physician recommends it. Uh, women uh, start are, you know, go through breast cancer screening starting at 40. And uh, there are many screening, uh, screening programs for, for most cancers. Uh, they should, uh, I suggest keeping people, uh, their weight in check. So that they, they uh, because if you keep a healthy weight, you lower, lower your cancer risk. The third is stay fit and active. Uh, I, again, that's been shown time and time, time again to lower cancer risk. And lastly, diet. Uh, the quality of the food you eat really does reflect your risk of developing cancer and other diseases. Thank you for this very constructive conversation, Dr. Shepard. Um, that is all for now, listeners. Stay tuned next week for a new episode with a new guest. You can log on to our website at uhcancercenter.org. You can also follow us on our social media pages, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handles are uhcancercenter. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.